Um, all right. Then we are going to now solve this dynamic programming problem for a risk averse utility function, and the the function we choose over here is this one. Phi of x is equal to natural log x. Okay. And this is what we're going to do over here. Now remember, we're going to start from the expected value. So we're going to use w over here. w is the expected utility if we bet the amount of y. So this is what we have. So w, which depends on x, the amount we have, and y, the amount we bet. And because the WIMP probability is p, so we have p times phi of x plus y. That's the utility when we win, plus the probability 1 minus p, and then the utility of x minus y. Okay. So now let's put this log x inside. So log x is phi of x. So this one is going to be log x plus y, and this one is going to be log x minus y. And this is going to be p log x plus y and plus 1 minus p, and log x minus y. We want to find the maximum expected utility. So we want to find the maximum value. And that is the notation we use, called v1 of x. 1 means over here we only have one game to play. Because we are maximized over y, so after optimization, we only have x left. We don't have y. So this is max and y is between x and 0. And then we copy this function over here. This turns the problem into a purely calculus problem. And because we're going to do calculus, so we will use the notation from calculus. And because of the property of this logarithmic function, we remember that this is what we have, that log a times b, right, is equal to log a plus log b. So this is the property we're going to use over here. And if we look at this one, y is between 0 and x, we are going to assume y is a certain portion of x. That way we introduce a new variable, and we use the property of this logarithmic function, and we can simplify the problem in terms of notation. So we're going to do the following thing. We're going to let y is equal to alpha x. Oh, uh, by the way, this is an unnecessary step, but it makes the calculation much easier and also looks neat. So now what do we have? So this is going to be the maximization over here, you'll see. Alpha now is between 1 and 0. Okay? And y disappears. So we have the probability over here, log x plus alpha x. And we see x is a common factor, so we pull out x, and then we use this property over here to simplify. That's the reason. It's very common if we are using this log x as our utility function, but in other cases, we may not need to do this, or this will not help at all. Okay, So now we pull x out, so this is what we have. So we have alpha is between 1 and 0. And this is going to be p log x and plus p log 1 plus alpha. 
and then this part is going to be y minus p and log x and plus y minus p and we have log y minus alpha. Now look at these two terms p log x and y minus p log x. Log x is a common factor and then p plus y minus p is simply 1. So put them together we say we say this is a convex combination. So we actually have log x. Now log x, x is a parameter here, alpha is the variable. So we can actually pull out this constant to the front of this maximization over here. So this is going to be simply log x because it's a constant. And then we have the maximization parameter over here. Alpha is less than 1. And bigger than or equal to 0. And we have the function over here. P is the parameter, the win probability. And log 1 plus alpha and plus 1 minus P and log 1 minus alpha. Now if you look at this one over here, this is purely a calculus problem over here. So just try to recall what we did in calculus. We can call this function over here a function of alpha and then we are trying to find the its absolute maximum between 0 and 1 and we're going to try to recall the way we did it before. So here, starting from over here, this is the separate problem, so it's calculus. Let me write it over here. So this is now calculus. Okay, so this is going to be calculus over here. So in calculus, we always use f. So we're going to call this a new function, f of alpha. And this function is going to be p log 1 plus alpha and plus 1 minus p and log 1 minus alpha. So how are we going to find the absolute, that absolute maximum of this function over the interval? Alpha is between 0 and 1. Recall this is what we did. We need to take the derivative. So this is the one we're going to do. We're going to take the derivative and set it to 0 and solve for alpha star. Solve for alpha star. This is called a critical value. And then we find all the candidates over here and then we choose the maximum. So we choose the maximum, choose the maximum value from f of 0, f of alpha star if we have several, and f of 1. So this is what we're going to do. Now this condition is very popular in economics. We call it first order condition because we take the first order derivative. But in practice, we have different ways to find the absolute maximum value of f of alpha. We're going to explain this one along the way. So now once we are clear about what we want to do, so now we do the following thing. So, we can take the derivative, remember alpha is the variable, and then for the log, remember this is going to be 1 plus alpha. 1 minus alpha, use, we need to remember the chain rule, take the derivative of inside is negative 1, so we can have a negative sign in the front, and 1 minus p, and this is going to be 1 minus alpha, so this is what we have. And we're going to set this one to 0 to find alpha star. To solve this one, this is nonlinear. Look at the denominator. There is an easy way to do that. So we have just moved one term to the one side and other one to the other side. And then this is what we have. And then we do the cross product. So we have p times 1 minus alpha is equal to 1 minus p and 1 plus alpha. Be careful about the details. So you're going to multiply them out. So this is what we have. So we have p and minus alpha p and is equal to 1 minus p and plus 
alpha minus alpha p. So we can see this term and this term, they cancel. And then we are solving alpha, so we have alpha star. And it's equal to, we see that's going to be 2p minus 1. Okay. So we're going to pause over here, and we will continue in part 2.